Hello. Today, let's look at a small subsection of a broad topic of permutation and combination, which is popularly known as the word problems. By gradually moving on from the word problems, we'll be entering a niche segment of people arrangement by extending the same logic of word problems. Let's start with a standard word which is generally used across the industry is the word education. If I pick up the word education and try to rearrange it in maximum possible ways, how many words can be formed is one question that comes up. If we look at the word education, it is E D U C A T I O N N, which is nine alphabets. For example, if I put in small nine dashes or nine blanks, and then I use the first word that is E, I have nine places to place this first alphabet E. So E can be placed in nine ways. I pick up the next one, which is D, that can be placed in eight ways. Extending the logic further, U in seven, C in six, A in five, and so on. The logic finally extends or ends as nine for the first, eight for the second, and because all of these are possible combinations, it will be a multiplication. So it will be nine into eight into seven into six into five into four and go on till one can be called as nine factorial. See, if at all we take up a small word, say and, we can try the application of the same logic and say first can be any of the three, second can be any of the two, third can be the only one combination. So it is three into two into one, that is six. Thinking through, A and D can be starting with A and we have N and D or we have A D N or we have N A D and then N D A or we have D A N and we have D N A. And that is the possible set of combinations, which is six in number, which can be said as three factorial. Going back to our problem of education, we'll try various combinations that are possible with the same word. Say education, as we discussed, is nine factorial. That is fine. If I start adding small logic one at a time, if I say every possible word where E is the first alphabet, if E is the first alphabet, I'll have to make E sit in that first blank and fix it there. If I fix it there, the remaining eight alphabets can be placed in the eight blanks, which is by eight factorial. Understandable logic. Further, I extend it and I say E should be the first and N should be the last. Cool. Extend the logic further. E fix to first, N fix to last. Seven of them wandering seven factorial. We've understood the logic of all of them together, fixing one of them. If somebody extends the question by saying that C has to be the fourth one, fix it there and the remaining becomes factorial. Easy application. We move in further and we find a typical set wherein we say A and T should be together. For example, if I try understanding this question by using these four fingers, I say these four are to be seated in four places. These two should be together. Effectively, we are seeing only three. Similarly, if I say the word education and I say A and T should be together, now the word looks like E is one alphabet, D, U, C, four alphabets, A, T together, five alphabet, I, O, N, three more, that makes it eight alphabets, effectively one alphabet reduced. If we consider this, totally there are only eight, so there should be eight factorial ways, correct logic. But if we consider eight factorial, what are we missing out here is that this particular A and T can be T and A also. So effectively, it is multiplied by two. Going back to the question, if we consider education as a word and we say A and T should be together, it could be A T, it could be T A. So initially, two possibilities, extending it, eight of them. So it is eight factorial into two factorial. Correct. If at all. I push it to the next step, and I say A and T should never be together. If A and T are never together, I cannot randomly think of a thought process where I put in A and not put in T next to it. Try other alphabet. This would be very cumbersome, and not give you the right answer. Rather, I can say safely that education is nine factorial, out of which A and T together we just about solved it. 
is 8 factorial into 2 factorial. So all the remaining words that would be there would not have a and t together. So effectively it is 9 factorial minus 8 factorial into 2 factorial which is right. We move further and try a little bit more complicated case where we take up CAT CAT the exam that we are all going to take education in such a way that CAT CAT is clearly visible. If the word CAT is to be visible the whole education every other alphabet can roam around but the three words of CAT should be together and in that order. So here those three words become a unit. If three words become a unit the remaining six are separate. So six plus this one unit is seven effectively the answer should be 7 factorial a small confusion here could be that those CAT can be intertwined or placed interchangeably amongst themselves but that would not look as a word cat together so this is a wrong thought process if I talk about education and I say the word cat has to be distinctly visible that just means those three become a unit all others become single units so that is 7 factorial if I move into the next and rather than saying that the cat should be distinctly visible if I say C, A and T should be together. If they are to be together that is C, A and T we are following the similar logic of three of them forming a unit and six of them separate so that is seven factorial and those three that is of C, A and T can be placed in again three factorial ways that means it will be seven factorial into 3 factorial that is when C, A and T are together. The questions that we have seen so far are all of them starting with E, starting with E and ending with N, A and T together, C, A, T, C, A, T such that they are together but cat is not visible distinctly. If we move in further wherein we extend an application, the same application to the next question wherein we say how many words are possible where all the vowels are together. If all the vowels are together this distinct word has all the five vowels a, e, i, o and u. Five together make a unit apart from that there are four other alphabets. Four alphabets and this unit make five. So effectively it is five factorial and all the possible movements of the vowels together. Five vowels together make five factorial and this 4 and this unit is 5 factorial so the answer to this will be 5 factorial into 5 factorial. Another variation here is where all the vowels are together and all the consonants are together. If the vowels are together it is 5 factorial we just about saw. Consonants are together it is 4 factorial. Now these 5 factorial is one set 4 factorial is another set we can do these two sets also swapping which would mean 5 factorial into 4 factorial into 2 factorial that will be the answer. Moving to the next question wherein we say no two vowels are together. We just concluded that this one particular word has all the 5 vowels. So if we distinctly place those 5 vowels in alternate places say for example the 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th and 9th that is the only way possible because only then the four consonants will fit in into these places in between these vowels. That means 5 factorial is the ways of arranging these vowels, 4 factorial is the way of arranging these consonants in between these vowels. The answer here would be 5 factorial into 4 factorial for the question where we say no two vowels are together. One last variation in these kind of questions is the question on how many ways can it be arranged such that the relative position of the vowels does not change? If the relative positioning is not changing that means the first one is a vowel it should stay a vowel, second is a consonant it should, it should stay a consonant, third one is a vowel it should stay a vowel and continues that way. That means a vowel can replace a vowel, consonant can replace a consonant. Again it is the same as 5 factorial into 4 factorial. I hope you have got a hold on how the movement of these things happen. Now one particular variation in these kind of questions is where the alphabets repeat. Say for example 
let's consider a very 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 simple example of the word tin t i n i say if i move this to make a rearrangement it could be six possibilities which is three factorial if i change the word from tin and i make it in i double n i double n should also be six of them wherein n i n will be two times t i n or so i double n another variation is again i double n but we don't know which n is where if such is the confusion we will have to divide it by the similar looking ends that means if i double n would have been different alphabets it would have been three factorial but if we take both the ends and we don't know which one is distinct which one is lying where we have to divide it by the number of combinations which is two factorial so effectively it is three factorial upon two factorial which is only three so for any kind of a word which has a lot of repetitions of the same alphabet we have to divide it by the factorials of each of the repetition for example management m a n a g e m e n t here a is coming twice m is coming twice n is coming twice and e is coming twice everywhere the same confusion persists management has 10 letters in it so it will be 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial for a 2 factorial for m 2 factorial for e and 2 factorial for n that is how we can say as management is 10 factorial upon 2 factorial into 2 factorial into 2 factorial into 2 factorial extend the example to mississippi a very typical example of four appearances of s four appearances of i and two appearances of p mississippi will be 11 factorial upon 4 factorial into 4 factorial into 2 factorial if we go back to the word education where in all the nine words or nine alphabets were distinct we can extend the logic to nine people sitting on nine chairs like how we had made nine alphabets sit on nine blanks we can make nine people sit on nine chairs if at all we extend it further and say those five vowels were boys that is the boys with the names whose first alphabets were vowels that means a e i o u all the five that were present in education were initials of the boys and the remaining four were that of initials of the girls now we can extend go back and think about all the questions that we had and apply them to the same situation that is the boys sitting together girls sitting together boys and girls boys all the boys together and all the girls together no two boys together extending it to a boy getting fixed on the first position a girl getting fixed on the last position everything can be put in here this would be a logical extension from alphabets to people we go back two three steps and think about three people and try extending it to a round table a small little trick gets added up the moment it's a round table for example if there are just three people a b and c around a round table first rule about a round table either we consider anti clockwise or we consider a clockwise so if three people are sitting i can say that if they are sitting in some direction wherein a b c is the order that also means b c a is the order that also means c a b is the order so that means a b c is the same as b c a is the same as a c b all of them mean the same arrangement where i am not moving people around if at all i look at the next possible arrangement wherein it is a c and b this would mean c b a is taken care of and b a c mean the same arrangement without moving around people if we think about this we are so sure that only two arrangements are possible one is that of a c b other one that of a b c there's something else which we can extend the logic to wherein we say there's a round table let's fix a starting point the moment i fix a starting point i say a is sitting and a will be the starting point and clockwise will be our orientation that means a b c and a c b become the only two possible arrangements very similar to what we saw in the word education where we fixed the first letter e so if now we extend the same thing from an education into a round table wherein we say nine people are sitting across a round table by application i would need that e to sit first and say okay this is the starting point once e is the starting point and my orientation is that of anti clockwise 
now i am very sure that there are eight places to go eight people to sit that would mean eight factorial so if there are nine people to be seated across a round table the possible arrangements are only eight factorial by formula it would mean n minus 1 factorial so for five people to be seated across a round table it will be four factorial and simple application going back whatever that we did we played with the word education we extended the word education to people boys and girls by extending that or application of the same logic we moved on to a round table practice a lot so that you understand the intricacies of these kind of problems once clearly understood it's short short question wherein you can be sure about an answer if you follow a process best of luck